Yes, I will be talking about civil society in Greece, and I'm really, really honored to represent here not just Praxis, but three more networks with vast experience who represent many organizations who uh, are basically frontliners. But if I had the chance to correct a little bit my title, it would have been before, during, and after question mark the crisis, because after the economic crisis, we have the pandemic crisis, and then we will have another crisis. So uh, let me start by saying um, that um, the time um, dot is around 2010 when the economic crisis in Greece started. And with all the austerity, the hard taxation, the memoranda, the agreements between the IMF, the EU, et cetera, the devaluation of the health system, the increase of poverty, vulnerability of populations, and social exclusion, and the density of all of that, we as civil society came across an impossible task. However, it was not only that, it was also uh, uh, the rise of Golden Dawn, a neo-Nazi criminal organization by now, and, but then it, was, uh, it had the form of a political party which got to the House of Parliament between 2012 and 2019. And in some times, it was the third political party in Greece. Um, let me take a few moments and talk to you about this picture. In 2013, a 27-year man from Bangladesh was murdered in the early hours of the morning while going to work by two members of Golden Dawn. And the, the impact of civil society was to highlight that the murder of Lukman was a hate crime. Uh, his murderers were found guilty, and it was a great moment, although you cannot say great, but it was a great moment in Greece, in Greek history, because it was the first ever racially recognized murder. And I say again, the contribution of civil society was really important to that fact. Around that time, you know, the beginning of 2010, we also witnessed um, increased flows of mobile populations. Um, in two years, in 2015 and 2016, almost two million people arrived at the islands of East Aegean. And civil society organizations were there, and even before that period, but we were there and we worked on face reception, case management, accommodation, informal education, psychosocial support, legal counseling, referrals, rescuing people to name but a few services that we provided and i believe that we are all today we are here familiar with the situation on the islands um, where thousands of people wait in inhuman conditions where human rights are violated and people are waiting for their asylum procedure where um, you know in conditions that are not only an insult to humanity but it's a huge a possible task for civil society organizations to provide the services in dignity and as um, to the best they can. Um, and that was an era as well where Greece got many negative distinctions like really high youth unemployment rate, uh, really low ranks in issues having to do with gender equality, uh, freedom of press. And if you, if you ask me what we have been doing since then as civil society and what we, we do is to give a uh, voice to people who are excluded, to give them visibility, to provide them with access to health, work, education and dignity. And we do that through three, um, three patterns, intervention, prevention, and advocacy. And I would be talking for hours about that, but because that this uh, only gives me six, uh, 30 minutes. So I will try to summarize everything we have been doing. And I will start by um, challenges. Uh, the challenges we have been facing 
are full time and they can be basically um, uh, resources when it comes to human and when it comes to funding. Then challenges can also be trends. And by trends, I mean either the um, history events, the historical events, or things that like, for instance, the willingness of funders to fund. And the last challenge is the institutional role of civil society. And please allow me to come back to that. We also have contemporary challenges, which are our resources, the trends, and our institutional role. Uh, I, I think that I should explain a few things of how situation is in Greece as to um, highlight further the importance of civil society, the challenges that we face, and the impact we have. Uh, when it comes to welfare, we've noticed a devaluation of welfare since the beginning of the economic crisis in 2010, and especially of the health system during the memoranda period. The welfare state, as it is constructed in Greece, it's got uh, an exclusive approach. It hasn't got an inclusive or a holistic um, view. Uh, to explain that, we need to prove that we are eligible to be recipients of benefits. Uh, then there are many areas that they are not covered, mostly uh, mental health issues. The red tape is impossible. To give you an example, in order for a homeless person to be issued benefits, the homeless person has to provide with the residency, uh, with the, the, the address. Uh, benefits, when they are given, are considered as panacea. And in many cases, they are anti, uh, they provide this form of anti motive to people. And they turn this, the people who receive benefits into apathy and institutionalization. And they are not motives for people to be inclusive and included in society. And last but not least, there, are, there is lack of protocols and procedures. So in some cases, we don't know which steps to follow, where to refer to, who is responsible for what, and where and how to go and look back and see what's working and what's not so as to um, correct it and uh, move on. Second is, is data. Kostadinos referred before to the uh, archive system. In, in Greece, there is lack of statistics. Uh, there, is, there is lack in, in, in numbers. There is lack of data which, which would demonstrate which are the issues to be tackled. There is lack of data which would demonstrate what the success is, what the failure is, or the need of improvement of specific policies. What I mean by that is that we as civil society try to offer our services and support certain groups, but because we do that without having the bigger picture of what's of what's going on. Sometimes our work is getting very, not fragmental, but we, we challenge with the issue of sustainability. And because there isn't um, any constructive mapping as of how the impact is portrayed in the improvement of such situation, then our work gets thin because sometimes we, we just repeat ourselves in what we, we do. Uh, then when it comes to, to the state, um, it's, it's common secret that coordination is, is not an issue um, in, in Greece. We, we do not um, have strong coordination skills, follow up or feedback protocols. There is, as I said before, a fragmentation of services like we, we do things, we provide, for instance, as praxis, and as the pictures have indicated, primary medical um, services. 
but these are not incorporated within the big picture. So if we haven't got a system that looks upon uh, very productively why people have to go to the polyclinic of uh, of a um, civil society organization rather to the public hospital and why the situation keeps on, then we are not as productive. And that's why I said before, we need to focus on intervention, prevention and advocacy. We are also overwhelmed with legislation upon legislation. We've got a plethora of legislations that either cover too little of too many things or they create obstacles is as how to, to work. Then we have this kind of tendency of the almighty market versus minimal state where civil society organizations are trying to provide services in, in a world that, and in a reality that creates more and more excluded populations, more and more difficulties in accessing health, education, and the job market. Then we have the personalized positions. That means due to the lack of protocols and procedures, some people hold positions and these people are open-minded and friendly. And some people hold positions and they are not open-minded and friendly. So we tend to turn to the people who are friendlier in order to have the job done and in order for the procedure to continue. Uh, I don't know if I have painted um, a grave picture, it's no grave picture, it's our, our reality. Uh, this picture, for instance, referred to street work we carry out in order to support uh, drug users and homeless population. And we go to these people because these people would have never gone to a hospital to get services, either because they are afraid that they would be further victimized, either because they are afraid that they would be um, excluded or denied services or maybe even sent to prison. So they just don't go to hospitals. And if they weren't for civil society organizations that carry out um, street work and provide with material, then these people would have nowhere else to turn to. Uh, you know, I, I, church is really strong in Greece. There is no clear separation between state and church. The secular power is, it seems to be weaker than the religious authority. And a statistic that's available tells us that there are more priests in Greece than doctors and medical doctors at public hospitals. Uh, so all these were our um, challenges, but what is the impact? I think that uh, maybe according to my experience and being in, in civil society, since I can remember my name, is to give people a voice, to create people who, have, who face an issue with dignity and respect and try to provide services, try to get to support their effort in social inclusion, um, try to um, be, be with them, be close to them, try to um, support people who are asylum seekers, who are refugees, to be included in, in a society that sometimes is not friendly, that sometimes is hostile, to work with the authorities, to safeguard a place where the rights are respected and their skills are unfolded and enhanced. Um, we have been providing services such informal um, education and at the same time working with the local communities as to show that the mobile populations are not the enemy, but the mobile populations are entitled to rights. And as I said before, one of the most important impacts civil society has in Greece is the, is the uh, sense of accessibility. We try to provide accessibility both ways. 
we support their effort in order to access health education work. And we go to them and provide them with room in order to unfold their experiences and provide tailor-made services. In, 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 in some cases, this is really, really difficult, not only because of lack of funding or lack of resources, because it's really hard in, in, in a society that's really tired because of austerity, is getting tired because of lockdown to provide services that have a sustainability um, effect. Uh, one of the impact civil society has, and it's something that makes me proud being a member of Praxis, is that we are going to coordinate in Greece European Citizens Initiative regarding the um, COVID-19 vaccine. So what we will do within the year to come is to collect signatures from the EU member states and get the signatures to European Parliament so that the EU legislation will ensure that the um, COVID vaccine would be accessible to all people. And I can be available for, for further information and details regarding that. Uh, another impact civil society has in Greece is that it collects first-hand experience from people, it gathers this experience, and it um, advocates and lobbies with local government, um, local authorities, the central government, and the EU in order to um, open up the paths for an inclusive society. Um, I, I said before that I, pre I represent here not just praxis, but uh, three more networks. One is the Hellenic Anti-Poverty Network, which consists of uh, more than 40 organizations. The, uh, the network for the house to writing, which represents 30 organizations and public entities, and the racist uh, violence recording network, which consists of more than 45 organizations. And so all these three take the experience, the first-hand experience, the frontline experience, and we get this experience to the relevant bodies as to um, not be repetitive, being um, uh, strong advocates of the people that we um, support. Uh, this is a demonstration that we carry out every uh, March on the 21st, which is the day against uh, discrimination, where civil society organizations uh, march against discrimination. Last year, it was a virtual one. This year, it's going to be virtual again. And we have, as civil society, to adapt our reflexes into the COVID era. And as Lindsay said before, how to can be productive and how we can carry out what we do, taking into consideration the restrictions of um, lockdown. And last but not least, and I don't know if I've talked over my time, um, is the elephant in the room. The elephant that we don't look at and the elephant that doesn't look at us. And it has to do with the institutional role of civil society. In Greece, we haven't got, we, we are not included in the decision making process. Uh, sometimes our participation is in procedures is is implemented by open-minded people in the right positions, and we are invited to participate, but not all the time. The recognition of the impact we have is not uh, established, sometimes is not visible. In many cases, civil society organizations have been served as either scapegoat or easy mark. There are many institutions and political parties in Greece that think that are disputants to the world of uh, civil society. There is rhetoric against civil society organizations and mass media have played a huge role in, in creating and sustain a negative 
and unfair image towards a civil society. Um, in, on that slide, I have included some press clippings of uh, last year, which uh, indicate and show the, uh, the rhetoric against civil society organizations. And to be frank, some days we try to prove that we are not the elephant in the room instead on, of focusing on our work, instead of working the, with the populations that we work with. Um, and what do I mean by populations? Uh, anyone who is in need of services, and, and you name it, uh, Greeks, no Greeks, asylum seekers, refugees, economic migrants, unaccompanied minors, Roma, people in prisons, people who just go out of prisons, people living with HIV, people living with hepatitis, um, people living on the streets, people in, in fear of losing their houses, people who cannot cope with um, the daily life, people with mental health issues. And the, the reason that the list of the people who receive our services is that long seems that civil society is, is filling in a gap, um, or filling in the gaps that the state cannot fill in itself. And if you ask me if, if I can see, um, if I can make a proposal, I think that the synergy in between the state, local authorities, civil society organizations, and public sector can only be um, fruitful so that we one day civil society organizations would cease to exist and we will enter an era of a, of a better world. And until the day comes, um, thank you very much for your attention.